He's creating beauty all over the place. We had, you know, we had so many great people over the years. We had so many great people in the plan commission, which was really instrumental in getting all this mm -hmm. done. It's kind of underrated as an organization. I remember putting the planning commission, uh, you know, um, here, here are our ideas. Here, yeah. let's run it by you guys, yeah. and people would come in and study that document. Yes. You know, I mean, a lot of people would just say, "Blow that off! I don't want to know anything about that." But no. They really were interested in And that was another curious thing at Morton, and I always loved it. Is you go to talk to people when I was in office, and they'd say, well, yeah, I watched the village board meeting on television the other night, and I always had two reactions to that. The f first one was sort of like, don't you have anything else to do? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the other one was, how wonderful that people really take an interest in their own government and participate, because that's what makes it's municipal true. government work. It's and we true. had huge numbers of people that came very constructively yeah. and said, why don't you do this or we ought That's not right. do that or, or whatever. They you know, have good, cogent right. arguments and were willing to put their their names to it and their and to their time, if need be, and commit to, to doing something true. for the, for the it's community. It's very true. That's neat. So how far do we have to go back or is it running now? Or? It's running now. Um, what were we I'd talking about when you think the power went down? He. Um, was he talking about <clears throat> England and... No, it wasn't that far back. Okay. I'd say maybe the last okay. two or three minutes. So if we start... I think you can pick up with a new question. Yeah. With a new question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And she got audio. I don't know if yeah. you have audio. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I'm kind of rambling. Then we're kind of off. Well, no, I... Because I, I think that's really important. Um... Steve, I always think of you as Steve. Is that a right, or do that you is, like prefer Stephen? I, for for anything formal, I use Stephen, like yeah. a, a, a document or something like that. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just Steve. Okay, good. Well, we were talking about the fact that um, he came back from England, and that he has been a government leader mm -hmm. for a long time in our town. And he came back and started giving again, and we were talking about the um, the giving nature of Morton, and that was one thing that he liked about the coming back to Morton, was the character of the town. He yeah, said yeah. the values and the character of the town, they were glad, although they enjoyed England very, very much. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we, had, we made some very good friends in, in Britain, and we invited them to come and visit. Ah. And so one couple did. And they came to Morton, and they were just knocked out by Morton. They, they just couldn't get over what what a really fine little town this was. They said it's so clean and orderly. That's true. And and said yes, that was that is the case. That's and true. Unfortunately, we frequently think of England in terms of Miss Marple and, yes. and all these tea drinking, highly civilized people, and, yes. and a, a portion of it has kind of lost that characteristic, and yeah. it's. Frequently in places where you find a lot of empty bottles and pizza packages and, yeah, and stuff whatnot. Like that. So they were they were um, astonished at how yeah. and, uh, how pleasantly organized we were and how clean it was and yeah. how responsive everybody was. Sure, and sure. And that again, that's just a characteristic of Morton. If you walk early in the morning, you will see people with sacks yes. going along picking up garbage as that. they are. You know, yes. now that I'm retired, I do that too. Yes. I, I do yeah. that too. Yeah. So that's that's the, again, it's a characteristic of more. more I, don't, I will say it doesn't happen other places, but it certainly happens sure. here. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. How many generations of your family have lived in Morton? Do your children still live? Here? No, my daughters are grown up, of course, and the older one lives in Palatine. She's okay. The one with children, so three children. Okay. And so, older grandson just started at U of I. Oh my. Last week. And younger one works for Caterpillar, and she's currently in Milwaukee. She spent five and a half years in Australia. Oh wow! And and uh, so we don't know where she will be next. But Does she still like to travel? Then oh yes, yeah. It's a, in our, all of us. It's in her, her blood, I think. And uh, so we we are certainly first generation Morton, and I am only second generation American on my father's side. Ah. My, my grandfather came here as a boy from Russia, escaping. Uh, persecution. Wow. And, and my mother's people, Anglo, 
Yeah. We've been here virtually forever. It came in the early 1800s, but. Uh, in I Pennsylvania, know. part of it. They, they, came, they came to Ohio. They, they came to mother, Ohio. My mother and dad had moved because of my dad's taking the okay. job. So they, they, were, they were originally from Columbus, and then we, after my and then, dad died, we went back to Columbus. There, but, did you go to Ohio State? I did. I'm All a Buckeye. Right. All died right. in the wool, Woody Hayes Buckeye. <laughs> I'm a Hawkeye, and uh, my, my granddaughter endeared herself to my brother, who graduated from Iowa, by saying at the Ohio State, Iowa game. What's that little potato doing running around? <laughs> uh, look, I, uh, I know. Well, we, I'm sorry to say that when I was in school there, it was difficult for Ohioans to acknowledge that there were any colleges or universities west of the Ohio border. Exactly. So it's, it's not exactly a civilized no. uh, uh, allegiance. Yeah, I always root for you guys in the in the Big Ten yeah. games, so that's good. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. What's your earliest memory of the village? That might be kind of fun. What well, did you Morton, think when you came? Well, we looked at, we came, we looked in, in and had relatively short time to try to find a house. Sure. And it was a seller's market. And what, and what year was 77. that? 77. Okay. It was in, it was in the fall of 77. Yeah. Okay. And it was a seller's market. You could not find a house anywhere. We looked all wow. over Peoria and I mean, you could be standing there and somebody would give the name, the asking price. And the next person would say, I'll raise that by $5,000. Wow. wow. And so we, um, we came, people had recommended Morton to us. And we looked around and there was one house available more than 389 North Oregon Avenue, oh. right there at the corner, pink brick and, sure. and white siding, right there at the at the corner. Uh, and it, it belonged to the real estate agents, uh, Arise Purvis, do you remember I her? do, I do. So Purvis, I can't remember the other two the names, family names that were associated with her. But they owned it and they made us a, a favorable price on it because it was coming to the end of the season and they said we, you sure. know, we really liked it. So we took it. It was a nice house, it was yeah. a three bedroom ranch worked for us. Sure. Good and school system. Good I, school, yes. school so district. I, I, you know, among my early memories, I think or our early memories were uh, how nicely organized everything was in, in Morton, quality of life here, mm -hmm. uh, ease of services. Uh, and and uh, I think the the just, just quality of life I think is the best way sure. to describe Morton. Sure. Morton was you could, you could walk anywhere. You didn't have to worry about what happened. Yeah, you know, for kids, sure. you know, kids went out to play. You could be pretty sure they hadn't gone too far or couldn't get in much trouble. Right. And um, and my wife and I used to walk a lot, so we would just walk all over the place, and you didn't have to worry about yeah. you know where you went. Did it surprise you that they didn't have sidewalks in most of the places and how wide the streets were? Uh, no, I don't think so because not. we came from Mentor, Ohio, and I think a number of neighborhoods in Mentor that did not have sidewalks. And there are civic development philosophies about why you do or don't do sure. sidewalks in some places. Sure. So I don't think that that was something that really uh, uh, impacted on us. Okay. We did have sidewalks on Oregon, and I think there was one on our side down mm -hmm. uh, Jackson at that time, went past the, the what is now the Elevate Church and right. the Presbyterian Church in the barn. Yeah, the barn church. Yes. That's a cool thing to yes, do, that too. Was a, that was a, a, a and it, was, it was kind of a landmark, it was sure. really interesting sure. place. Do you have one memory that kind of sticks out when you guys first, either when you first came or when you came back from uh, the UK, a memory of the village that you? I guess my strongest memory is coming here. We drove, mm. we bought two cars, and my older daughter was me, me in one car, and the younger daughter was my wife in the car behind me. And my daughter went to sleep. And we had driven for a long time. She was sleeping in the back seat. She woke up, I guess, somewhere around Bloomington. Oh, okay. And looked out the window of the car, looked around the flat countryside. She says, gosh, Dad, this looks like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and, and so it, it, it was, I think that one of the things that hit us, that really hit me, was after the rolling hills of Ohio, and yes. mentor where we'd been, which had a pretty diverse terrain. 
here we were in this flat farmland. But I came to love the beauty of the, the farmland. And you yes. may remember I wrote a piece about it once for the paper. And, and, I do and, remember uh, that. And uh, I think coming back from the UK, the, the, the principal memory was, uh, I think, how much Morton had recovered from the da economic damage in the yes. 80s. Yes, oh you boy. Remember when the, you know, the, the bumper sure stickers do. last went out, turn out the lights, and, yeah. and, and um, you know, Jackson Street was almost empty. It was. And uh, Witzigas had gone out, and so yeah. there had been a lot of, a lot of, and so when we came back, uh, the, the, the little city we lived in in the UK was celebrating its 1500th anniversary. <laughs> And when we got here, there were flags up for Morton Township celebrating its 150th anniversary. Isn't I said, you that? dropped a zero. <laughs> um, but it was, the, it was, I think, the sense of how well Morton had progressed yeah. during that time. Yeah. And then, and then uh, Mayor Roth yeah. asked me to rejoin the Plan Commission. That's so good. That, that's, that was great. Um, is there anything you miss about the way it used to be? Things that I you... certainly miss Witzix. I know me and too. And for two or three reasons. One was it was it was such a neat place. Yeah. But but the other was it was our store. You know, it was, yeah. it was a family owned. You went in there and there was Harold Witzig, you know, yes. the Witzig boys. And, yes. you, and, and sometimes they call me up and say, hey, we just got some suits in. There's one here that, that I know you like these suits. You know, we, we, you've got one in your they size. They did. You know, yes. They really did. And and I got to know the Witzigs there. I got to know Harold Witzig fairly well. Yeah. I, was, I just had such high regard for, for Harold. He was a, a very gentle and civilized man. He sure and, was. And so I, I miss Witzigs. And, of course, we all miss the yeah. pepper mill. Yes. Um, but I think the, the, there, there wasn't much else that we probably, because there's so many other good things had been done. So you, it's you, true. I think if we'd have been born and raised here, maybe we would have had a little different perspective. Mm -hmm. You talk to some of the older folks, you know, you, you go to coffee with Bud Witzig, you know, you, or I mean Bud Zobrist, you sure. get a completely different you know, the view of Morton back way back when. Way back when. And yeah. And uh, so if we'd have had more of that kind of experience, uh, it might have made a difference. But uh, you know, and I and I missed. Of course, we lost Dean Grimm just a few years ago. I but know. I, I, Dean and I came to be good friends. Again, didn't always agree with him. But when I joined the the, the, the plan commission, he was the chairman. Mm. And much of what I learned about operating in village government. I learned from Dean. Very yeah, good. I always had a very high regard for Dean. Again, didn't always agree with him. Sometimes yeah. we'd argue about things. But the Dean always knew where you stood. That's right. And he was willing to make commitments for the village of Morton. He did more than once without anybody even knowing about it. Yeah. He just did it. And sometimes in the face of criticism of people didn't know what he was doing, never said a word. That was just Dean. And I used to love his TV commercials. Remember, and he'd say, it's December. And he would have his end of the year yes. sale for December. Yes. And, and so <laughs> those, those things were, you know, were kind of um, empty spots when we came sure. back. And his business was sort of phasing out by then. Sure. And, uh, I guess one thing that impressed me, and I bet you experienced that too, was how open the leadership of the town is to the people. Yes. There is not a layer of I'm up here and you're down there. It's all we're together for Morton. All the years I served, about 30 altogether. Yeah, wow. The people I served with brought a selfless commitment to the community a genuine desire to do the right thing. Right. I never encountered anybody who sought to enrich himself or herself. It didn't mean we always agreed. Right. But these were people who sat down and we had, despite the criticism sometimes, about as transparent government as it was possible to have. And and there were never, during my time in, in government, I never saw it. I was, 
may have happened that I didn't know about it early on, but I don't think it did. I, I never saw any backroom deals or any, anything. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some transactions that take place in closed session that are required to take place in closed oh, session sure. because they involve business confidentiality. But before you can act on them, they have to be public. Then they come up for discussion of the board. They have to be presented to the, to right. the public. But uh, nobody, in my experience, plan commission, zoning board of appeals, village board, all those years, and all the years I knew of before that, not one person who was inaccessible or manipulative or, right. or um, sought to feather his or her own nest and, and generally speaking, if you had an issue, you could call up the mayor or anybody else and, and, and hey, uh, tell me what you're interested in or come to a meeting or I'll meet you for a cup of coffee or whatever it is. But as you say, it was a very straightforward uh, government and, and Open. people people had access to it. Probably had more access in a lot of cases than they took advantage of. That's right. But we had we had critics and in some cases people who impugned the board inappropriately. But um, I think uh, you might always get that. Well, I don't think it's a, it's not avoidable. No. But people have a a certainly entitled to and, and perhaps have a responsibility to challenge their government but it needs yeah. to be based on factual information mm -hmm. and, you know, and informed uh, challenge and mm -hmm. generally speaking that's what we found people would come and, as I said why don't you do this or why are we doing that you sure. know, you know I've got an idea from to do X uh, and, and to the best of knowledge my knowledge, we were always, and people before me, <clears throat> were at least willing to listen. That's what I think too. That whenever I had any questions about anything, emailed anybody, I always got an answer back. May not have liked the answer, but I always got an answer back. I didn't complain very much. <laughs> I don't remember you ever complaining. Anymore. I do remember you when I first met you. Okay. Uh, we had taken children's books out. Oh, okay. And my daughter, you may remember this, my daughter had a book, and I think I got a notice from the library. <clears throat> and I came and said, I turned that book in. And you said, we don't have it, I don't think you turned it in. And I think at that point there was some question about, you know, they need to pay for the book. Mm -hmm. And I said to you at the time, um, well, I'm sure I turned that in, and I, I don't think I'm, I'm responsible for it. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 and you said very diplomatically uh, something, you know, before you take that, you know, firm position, you know, make sure you have to get the book or something. Well, I went home and I checked around. I got after my daughter. And some days later, or maybe a couple of weeks later, I remember what it was. Turned out she'd loaned it to one of her friends. Oh, dear. And the book turned out, and I came back and brought the book back. And I said, yes. you were right, and I was wrong. <laughs> and and uh, that, was, that was our, our that earliest was, experience yeah. together. Do you oh, remember that? I do remember yeah. that. Yeah, I do. But <clears> you know, I lost a book. My daughter uh, lost a book. And I finally, she was four. And I asked her, do you know where so-and-so book is? And she went, sure, Mom, it's in the clothes hamper. And I'm like, well, why didn't I yeah, think to yes. look there? Exactly. <laughs> you know? But I was so sure that so, I had brought I that book back. And mm -hmm. then uh, turns out, I said, don't ever give yeah. a library book to somebody again without making sure you get it back in time That's to turn right. it in. You know, that you're responsible That's for right. that. Okay, that ended that. Was your family a library user from the get-go? Probably, and we always read, because I had a lot of books at home, and we sure. bought books for our kids. Sure. So the kids used the library, my wife not so much, but I've always used the, the library, but our, our kids, I grew up reading, I grew up with books all around me. Sure. And my parents read me stories, and I read stories to the girls, Yeah. to the extent that I was, when, when they were in grade school, I was reading Sherlock Holmes. Oh, wow. The girls. They and one of them that. went to school one day and something came up in class about Sherlock Holmes and my daughter said, oh yeah, I know about that. And the teacher said, you can't know about that. How would you know about that? She <laughs> said, I do too. My dad reads us the stories. <clears throat> That's good. That is so very good. So we grew good. up books. I would die without books. I keep a yeah, stack like too. this all the time. I me read too. all the time. Yeah, I'd read several cereal yeah. boxes if I didn't Everything I can think of. There are other wonderful things about Morton, like the park system. What do you like about the park, or what did your kids use about the park system? And 
the kids used... Did they do swim lessons? Did they do... Uh, they were in various activities. They were, they did not, they both swim, but they mm -hmm. weren't in swimming sports. They were mostly in dance and music in, sc in school. School plays, uh, bar sure. you remember Barbara Moat? Sure, the, the, I do. The, 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 oh, the yes. uh, show choir. Yes, yeah, They were both in show choir, and the younger daughter was in the the two or three annual plays in, in high school. That's uh, great. We did go to, we did use the parks. Morton is peculiar in the sense that the park board is sort of uh, very separate from sure. the, from the uh, other uh, political entities. Right. So we, we've got a village board, a park board, a school board, a, library a township board. library board. Mm -hmm. And I argued all the time I was in office for a kind of a closer relationship. And Norm mm -hmm. Durflinger did try to create a, a kind of a joint. We did have uh, joint we, board meetings, and that yes. was fun. That yeah. was good. It worked out well. I thought it could have good. gone a little further. And I used to send people copies of the Oregon School Planning Handbook, mm. which was a really interesting piece of work, but it is its chief virtue was its illustration of how the school board, the municipalities, and the park boards had worked together to, to plan and create the kind of outcomes that they wanted. Mm -hmm. And Morton's uh, municipal and school and park board activities have always been sort of parallel, but but separate. Mm -hmm. So there, if there's one thing that I probably would change is I'd like to see a little bit more integration. And communication. Than the, that we have had, kind of yes, and we've mm -hmm. had uh, over the years. There are arguments for and against, but I, I think sure. that, that uh, and we have had good cooperation in, in, we in have. projects. We had the, 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 the plaza mm -hmm. was an example where, where we had worked with the uh, park board to make sure that we weren't um, usurping their authority, which right. is not a park, right? Um, but uh, took some of their suggestions and um, were able to integrate the, the Veterans Memorial there that, right. that probably was not going to get built as it had been presented to the, uh, to the park board for lack of funding. Yes. So uh, that, that was a successful outcome, and I think the park board's done a great job over mm -hmm. the years, especially with the continued development of Idlewood Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't have any criticism to make. Criticism to make. I just it's a, kind of an observation that you know, other places they are somewhat more Together. integrated, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes successfully and maybe sometimes not. Yeah. And I don't know that it's done Morton any harm, but I, I think yeah. it would be certainly for long-term planning projects. Or I could I could make an argument for mm -hmm. a higher level of integration, school board, sure. village board. In the, in the park board. I think there's a lot of back fence kind of communication yes. and things. Yeah. When, when the art show, when the Morton Art Guild needed a place to store their pegboards, uh, the park district did yep. that for us. So they've always been responsive. Yeah. But and, and yeah. we always try to have somebody from the park board on the plan commission. Right. And but, that's important yes. because that's a really, that's a real draw to Morton, don't you think? What do you think are the biggest draws when people, when people are looking? You said a downtown and the schools. Mm -hmm. We itemized them when we were working on the the uh, creation of the Economic Development Council and mm -hmm. the downtown planning that we had proposed and so mm -hmm. forth. And I I think. You know, the chief one is quality of life and Morton's, Morton's residential quality. That is, yes. that is, I'm going to use the word unique. That's yes, the, the, it is. means one of a kind, implies there aren't any other, and That's there, there are, certainly are other communities. But but locally, I think we are unique in that uh, respect. So we have a very high quality of life. We have an excellent school system. Uh, we're economically viable. That's mm -hmm. extremely important, important and prosperous. Uh, we have uh, an excellent park ne network. That is true in recreational activities. Yes. If there's something you're interested in, it's hard not to find somebody in Morton who does it or, right. or wants to do it. Disc golf. Um, yes. So uh, those would certainly be some of the the 
the things. top ones and then the attractions. Of the, but when, when we did interviews and talked about people coming here to the Economic Development Council, typically what you would hear is quality of life, school district, um, downtown, a viable downtown. Right. And, and as I said earlier, the facts are incontrovertible. You can any seminar you want around the globe, and from towns our size, moderate sized communities, school school district, and downtown. And if you begin to lose either one of those, you don't have to drive very far from here. And you go down into southern That's Illinois, right. Missouri, Arkansas, and some of those places that at one time had viable downtowns, yeah, and they're just gone, yeah. and there's nobody there. So keeping a viable downtown is a is a critical right. uh, quality for for Morton. And uh, again, I. So pleased that we've been successful and since I've been gone. That success has continued, and, so and I, we have a we just have an outstanding yeah. downtown anymore. And it just gets better and better. Yeah, and the pumpkin festival, of course, is so important to Morton. Did you fa your family over the years participate? Did you attend? We were, did you do the rides? Did you we work were, in the booths? What did you do? I I because I traveled a lot for Caterpillar and. and I, didn't, I wasn't much of a volunteer in those days other than the well, commission. But we always took probably. the kids. We mm -hmm. went when well, the kids were small and then I went <clears throat> they were growing up, but I went certainly as a trustee I went because I felt sure. that I, you know, I needed uh, to be there. Um, the pumpkin festival exists because Morton cans does not grow, but cans about eighty five percent yeah. of the nation's pumpkins. Isn't that amazing? And that's it is amazing, but it's all tied to Nestle and what their plans are. And it's really important, again, that was another job that the Economic Development Council did, working closely with Nestle to make sure that we met each other's expectations. And so sure. when we took the uh, 2014 Chamber Economic Council uh, expedition to Switzerland, uh, Kim Ulig and I were the official visitors to Nestle headquarters in Vevey. Oh, okay. And uh, make sure that we had uh, reason to believe that we that we would have a pumpkin festival that was associated with real pumpkin canning yeah. in Morton for the future, and, <laughs> and came away, uh, you know, with with good prospects that will go on for a long time. Yet. Yes, yes. I think that's something that really draws the community together to the pumpkin festival and the volunteering. Yes, and again, that is, I think, when you talk about characteristics of work, that is, again, something that's unusual, the number of hours that people put in and the, the commitment that people make to that. That's right. And the fact that people come from miles around. Uh, you know, my, my older daughter, 50 years old, plus friends from Morton, this time of year, they're talking to each other about who's going back to Morton for the pumpkin yes. festival. A lot of them do. It's true. So it is. It is something that that seems to keep its attraction for uh, Morton kids who've grown up and gone elsewhere. An attraction for for lots of people that come here for I'm not sure what reason, but they sure like the pumpkin festival and they come and, and they sure do. Good on us for doing it, and, and good yeah. for all of those people that help make it work. That have my absolute respect because it is it is hard work and a lot of time a big it commitment is. it is great you know i'm having such fun do we have to stop at three or do you want us to stop now i don't know no, we, can, we, we can go till three i think Susan i mean that's that's good okay um let's see um i'm trying to do you remember any of the, lo well, you've already mentioned uh, Dean Graham, local town characters. Oh, yeah. That kind of thing. Um, how about, uh, are there any family members or family member accomplishments in your family that you'd like to have remembered that are connected? Well, your kids went with swing choir, you said. The show choir. Yes, they did. And, and were they bandies too? Were they? No. Didn't uh, do band? They were. They were uh, in the performing arts. Okay. And older daughter went when she was fifteen with the, the Barbara Motes class to uh, Europe, the nice, Germany. Nice, nice. And uh, my heart in my mouth, hoping she would come home again. <laughs> she did. Oh, uh, that was good. Was but, Rudy Husick? It, was he connected 
with that group that went, or uh, no, they didn't uh, go to the a sister city. No, there was that. Okay. I don't think that sister city thing Existed ever then. really materialized. Because okay. I got involved in sister city stuff a while back, and we just never could get it going. And I and I heard sure. a lot about. I didn't know Rudy, uh, but I knew his name. I, know, I think maybe I met him once, but. Um, uh, he had tried to do that, and I'm not sure what happened to yeah. it, but sister cities in recent years everywhere have kind of floundered, sure. I think, a sure. little bit from what I know of them. And uh, so this was strictly the 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 itinerary of musical appearances that That's they had great. made. And they started out in, in uh, Holland and uh, in Amsterdam and made their way uh, through Germany and then Nice. I came back and it was a great experience for my, that, for that my daughter. Is, that is <clears throat> great. Let's see. Um, we talked about Witzig's um, and you talked about the library. Which grade school did your kids go? They had to go to Lincoln. They went to Lincoln? Went to Lincoln. I think they both went to Lincoln, yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, grocery stores. You know, that's one thing that I've noticed about this town is that we can, we can't really, three grocery stores just don't make it in this town. If we get a third one, somebody dies. We worked hard on that when we formed the Economic Development Council. Yeah, Council's. yeah. Uh, a whole bunch of things play into that. One is the advent of the large scale stores like Sam's Club right. and, and Costco. Right. Um, one difficulty is that we just aren't at the critical mass. You're right. That will support. We talked to a lot of yeah. grocery store leadership. Jennifer Daly, when she was yeah. head of the, the Economic Development Council, worked with some that she had known from her previous uh, uh, assignments. Sure. And we're just kind of on the edge. Yes. We did manage to. Um, I think to provide the basis for Kroger investing some more money here, and that became mm -hmm. successful, I think. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have uh, Walmart, which is a Killed sort Sullivan. of a grocery store. Killed Sullivan's. Yeah. Killed. But yes. But the other grocery stores that were here, the one that, the one that used to be um, where Mike, uh, no, not where Mike Murphy is, but uh, by the bank. Martin's? Martin's. Yeah. Um, and then there was a country market up in those. Yes. Uh, but those kinds of places haven't done very they well just making anywhere it a, if, yeah. anymore. The, the, the idea of the local grocery. Yeah. And we meant when we moved to the UK, you had sort of the typical little UK town where you've got the, the green grocer and the butcher and the well, they, were beginning, and they were beginning to have the same problems really? that, that, that we were. So the person who would go in and knew the the, the shop owner who would sell you cabbages and tomatoes and corn and you know whatever and comment on the quality of this and sure. you know, I've got the fresh of this today and don't buy those they're getting old or whatever. Those little places were beginning to be uh, lost uh -huh. as well. It's a global and phenomenon. So sad. It's so related. Sad. It's related to scale and packaging because a lot of those places didn't. You know, my grandmother used to go shopping. I remember when I was a kid, she had a big market basket on her arm. Was this big. Oh my you go goodness. to the go to the, and you go to the green grocer or the butcher shop and the sure. you know, whatever the poultry seller and whatever and t they'd wrap it up in brown paper when they're right. home. Well, with the penetration of food goods by all of these people who who who, are sne who were a few years ago were sneaking arsenic and yeah. whatever in in our you know yeah. food. All of the packaging laws now, and sanitary laws, yeah. and the questions about corporate liability means that everything's yeah. got to be sealed in plastic in a way that you get home and it, it takes you an hour to open the package. <laughs> but but at least you can be sure. But, yes. but that that has damaged partly. That's been part of I think what's damaged the kinds of people. So you know, you went, okay, here's a you know, pick as many onions as you want or don't want to right. the fresh fish or or whatever. So I think it's it's harder to do. But a lot of it's just economies of scale. Yeah. yeah. Big stores buy in volume, they can, they control their distribution yeah. better, you know, and lower, so prices. lower cost yeah. for them, so you know, lower cost to the consumer. Yeah. And it just it's just harder. But we did lose some. We tried hard. Uh, we, we talked to Hy-Vee. We talked to mm. 
a couple of others. I think I went to Whole Foods one time, tried to get them interested. Yeah. Um, just didn't happen, but it'd be wonderful if we had another place. But curiously enough, yeah. people find the alternatives. A lot of Mortonites go to Lindy's. I know. That's true. I had a friend who was in Washington Christian Village uh, nursing home, and that I would stop at Lindy's on the way home. Well, I talked to Lindy's, the, the, the Economic Development Council, I had a couple of conversations mm -hmm. with them, and I talked to them personally, and they considered coming here. But they looked at the cost of creating a modern, building a modern grocery store, wow. even taking over the old um, Rokies yeah. site. Yeah. The cost to Anna Morton was just too high a risk when they recognized that they had a core of Morton customers who would happily That's drive true. to Washington to They're shop in They're a niche market there, right? And mm -hmm. you can't blame them for making yeah. that decision. They're a boutique store. Yes, They're absolutely. a boutique store, and yeah. that's people are willing to pay that little extra for the good stuff that you get for there. But someday we're going to be 20,000, 25,000 people. I think we're right up around 17,000 right now, yeah. maybe a little more. Yeah. We get up around 20,000, 25,000, that will change. That's kind of the tipping point. Mm. So I think if that happens, then we'll see uh, another kind of investment here. Mm -hmm. But we are, again, use the word unique, we are a unique community and when we used to talk about some of the kind of investment around the community, I used to tell people there's a reason why why Gary Eftering put his Jaguar dealership on the other side of Peoria. Then yeah. we did a study yeah. and the buying characteristics of people with similar incomes and educations, North Peoria and Dunlap, right. are different from those of Morton. And there is a whole list uh, of reasons uh, field of uh, psychographics mm -hmm. having to do with the kinds of how people spend their money and what their predilections are and yeah. so forth uh, that deal with that in uh, stores like you know, Cabela's and Whole Foods right. and the kinds of places that people talk about why can't we get one of those they've got staffs of people or rely on on consultants who deal with these right. kinds of things and they can say if you go to this community, you've got X number of people who are potential shoppers for this kind of thing and so much disposable income here and so on, and they have they break can. points where they say you, you, yeah. you pass yeah. the test or you don't. And in right. a couple of cases, we've been right on the cusp, Yes. but we didn't quite make it. So I think eventually that will happen. Yeah. One more question yes. and then I'm going to stop because okay. it's 3 o'clock. Um, how do you think the churches in Morton have influenced the quality of life, or do you think they have? Well, clearly they have. And when we came here, the two predominant faiths were Mennonite and Apostolic. Mm -hmm. And I would say they had two clear characteristics. One was the, the quality of their commitment to their, mm -hmm. to their faith, and that was undeniable. Yes. The other was the extent to which they were um, insular, mm. and it made it uh, a little bit more difficult, perhaps, if you didn't belong to one of those faiths, mm -hmm. to be able to navigate in the community in the way you might have if A, you had belonged to that sure. faith, or if those churches had not been so uh, prominent. On the other hand, you've got to say, and I consider myself a neutral observer because I don't belong to either. To either one. Uh, you, you cannot argue anything but that the, those, the very strong More. characteristics of faith mm -hmm and uh, moral position, business principles, family values, all those kinds of things are, to a large extent, what has made Morton Morton. And in fact, I think I did a piece on that for the Morton Times News once also. But it is, it is something in our Morton DNA, yeah. and a huge amount of that has come by way of contribution from the people who belonged to the not to exclude other churches, but right. but in the old days, those were the churches. We had three or four mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
versions, for lack of a better word, of, of sure. Mennonite, of persuasions sure. of, of Mennonite. It's true. And and then the apostolics. Mm -hmm. uh, the there was a Catholic was mission. A Catholic, yes. Mm -hmm. Catholic. When I first, the Catholic school was new when I came here. Mm -hmm. The Presbyterian congregation was small, and there was a Methodist uh, mm -hmm. congregation. Mm -hmm. And and uh, mm -hmm. so they would all of them contributed. But I think that the, the you, you have to look and say those old world ideas that they brought in this this journey, this immigration. Right. From Switzerland and Alsace and Rain and Germany and all across the United States and here, they brought those ideas with, them, with ideas about farming and small business and the way you did things and mm -hmm. the way you treated your neighbors yeah. and the idea of self-help. Somebody's barn burns down, you pitch in and you help That's rebuild right. it. Somebody's business is in trouble, you go help them. If somebody gets sick and they can't get in the harvest, you go help That's Mrs. Right. So-and-so get the harvest That's in because right. her husband's in bed with Later. a broken leg or yeah. something. So I, I think I think that they they have made an indelible and important impression on, on Morton and, and all of the people who belong to those congregations ought to be very proud of what they what they helped create. You too. Well, I thank you for all this neat interview, and I congratulate you on being a big part of why Morton's like it is. Because well, twice you. on the planning commission, trusteeship. That's pretty impressive. I don't think I can take much credit for it. I am just one among many, but it was it, it was very gratifying to do. Yes, that's great. Well, thank you very much. This is lots of fun.